You are listening to the Pro Audio series, presented by Life Vantage, featuring Blue Elam. This audio presentation includes income and lifestyle claims, including but not limited to income earned, potential income of distributors, purchases made from income, such as homes, cars, vacations, etc. A complete earnings claim statement, which includes a summary of income earned by the distributors, can be found at LifeVantage.com. All right. Um, I hope you don't mind me pacing a little bit. I have a friend that challenged me on my, my Fitbit. I'm a little bit behind, so I've been sitting here, so I'm, I'm going to catch up. I don't like losing challenges for anything and a little bit competitive. And uh, so if I get going too fast, just stop me if, I get, if you get sick or get busy. <laughs> I have, um, I have a lot I'd like to share today. I won't get into some of that, but something I do want to touch on is just the importance of, of us understanding um, the diversification of the elites. Right, there's a value to that I hope we realize. Just because it's a rank means a lot. It means something was done. It means something was, work was done, effort was done. That person had to become a type of person that can run that size of business. They had to become the type of person who could do a presentation at the drop of a hat, do a, a training at the drop of a hat, um, talk to someone else from another company at some time, kind of intellectual level at, at, if they're from another company doing well in that company. There's just things that you have to learn. And we're talking at breakfast this morning with, with John. Where are you guys at in the back? We were chatting about this, and I said, if, what if you were handed a, a Pro 10 business? What would that mean? You know, and there's, at first there's a little bit of excitement. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be cool. You know, you're thinking of income, you're thinking of money, you're thinking of all those things. But in reality, we got discussing. I said, okay, what if you were asked today to go and speak at convention? You know, we want to get 10,000 people there, right? Jump on stage and train them on a topic that will be handed to you when you get there. <laughs> And, and, and instantly we started talking. I was like, well, I don't think I could do that yet because I don't know exactly what it takes to do that. I don't know if I could train that yet because I haven't done that yet. I haven't, I haven't crossed those lines yet. I haven't uh, adapted that skill set, right? Or become, I say become that type of person, not in some way that we need to change who we are and all of that. I just mean we need to add some qualities, some uh, communication qualities and some things to our life that we may not have had previously. And we had a great conversation about that, and I said, that is why we have these challenges, and we go through all of this, and we can only bail people out so far is because the, the process in which we get to elite is what makes us a true elite, someone who can train and motivate and teach and educate and inspire and, and hopefully enjoy the, that lifestyle correctly and be able to pass that down to others and not forget what it was like before you were elite. When you're rolling quarters and, 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 and praying for that mill to come in and, and that, that raise at work and, and those things, right? And I mentioned that from stage at the last event was what our commitment was. And I just want to commit to you to, to for personally and then for hopefully that we always remember that we don't have all, you know, the luxury sometimes of just having that income. And we know that. We, we've been in those positions to know that sometimes it's hard. And when we get a call... And I got someone coming to the presentation, or can you do the presentation at my house? We do our best to, to, to support and help that because we understand um, that someone just spent their last dollar to get to the, the last event. Right? We understand that someone just spent or sold their vehicle, right? Or their motorcycle, or their TV off out of their house to, to get to that event or to buy their package, and we understand that. And so I have a lot of respect and when we do the Pro 5 fly-ins, I know what it took to get to Pro 5. I have a lot of respect when we do the elite retreats and get to rub shoulders with other elites. I learn a lot from them. But um, because there is a lot of fun we have in this. We get to show people and individuals that we come from all different backgrounds, and it's okay. It's okay. Be, be excited from where you came from. Be excited for what you bring to the table. Be excited for your background and the things you learn and the way you grew up. Adapt some, some new principles if needed, but don't lose the things that already make you who you are. Just at any moment, be willing to give up who you are for who you really want to become. 
at any moment be able to drop a habit, a, a thought, a concept um, for something that you really want to be. That's something we can't teach, we can't, we can't do. I'm okay, thank you. But at any moment, you hear and something touches you and you say, you know, I need, that's what I need, that's what I needed. Right? That's the, the nugget, that's the nut and bolt I came for, that's the, the piece that I, I'm here for. That's why I missed the, the boating trip today was for that. And it might just be a couple things. But those couple things hopefully will be what allows you to drop some things that are in your life that are wasting some time or, or getting in your way to become the Pro 10 or the Pro 7 or the Pro 8 that you aspire to be. Become the type of person that can run the size of business that you, you really want to have. Um, real quick and some thoughts. I, we almost didn't make it here. I thought it was kind of funny. I was just thinking back a little bit on a couple, uh, couple thoughts. And I hope you can pull some of the training out of this because I just have some stories I'd like to share. And hopefully you can grab hold and realize that we're people. We make mistakes and, uh, and hopefully you learn. And, and I'm pretty much an open book when it comes to things we did good and things we, we messed up on. Hoping that you don't make the same mistakes and to do the things we did good be even better. So you can increase your rate of exposure and get to from point A to B a lot faster. Um, but I thought it was interesting when we got on the plane. Well, I, I'll give you this. I got to the airport yesterday morning in Tucson. And I thought it was funny because I got there and, and I get up to the, the uh, counter and they said, your flight's been canceled. I said, oh, really, it's been canceled, why? And they said, oh, we tried calling you. I checked my phone, there was no, no messages. And, and they said, well, it's been, it's been canceled. And they, they, I said, before, and she asked, was it mechanical? And she asked the guy next to him, what, why was it canceled? He said, oh, no, it's just been delayed, indefinitely delayed. <laughs> and she's like, she rolls her eyes, looks at me, it's been canceled. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> rolls her eyes at her friend who, who changed that. Um, they were ordering a part, it was gonna take two days to get there and three days to put in, and so yeah, it was canceled. We didn't wanna wait around for a week to get here, unless you guys wanted to hang out for a while. Um, but yeah, it was fine. I got on the airplane and, and I listened to those things over and over again, the little, the little things they tell you, and I was kinda of laughing about the seatbelt thing again and everything, but I caught something this time. And you guys might, might have noticed this already, but it was kind of interesting. She said, she said, currently, we have four exits on the plane. One in the front, two in the wings, and one in the back. <laughs> And I don't know why, but that hit me so, I was laughing in my seat. Currently, we have four exits. And I don't know, the thought was, what would have to take place for there to be more or less exits? <laughs> and, I mean, I saw some movies where, you know, front half's gone and, you know, the back half's gone. Everybody is now, the exit is now in the rear of the airplane only. Um, please exit that way. Um, we, you guys, we have a good time. But I, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, another traveling story I thought was interesting. I, I, we were coming into Salt Lake, actually, one time. And, it, and there's quite a bit of turbulence coming out of the mountains and getting over the Rockies and stuff. And, and I got, finally got in. And I remember the, the, the uh, captain saying, hey, it's going to be a little bumpy. Why don't you put your seatbelt on? And some guy said, I really got to go. And he was setting a few rows in front of me. So I went to the bathroom. He's in the bathroom. And I remember the flight attendant's coming down. And she's walking down the aisle. And... And, uh, and I'm watching her, and, she, and we start hitting some big bumps, big bumps, big bumps. And it got bad enough that she, she looks over and sees an empty seat. She jumps in the seat and puts on the seatbelt <laughs> where the passenger was sitting. And I'm just kind of laughing at that. There's a guy in the bathroom dealing with all the, the stuff right now. <laughs> Second of all, he's going to come back and try to get a seat. And sure enough, he comes out, and he's kind of hurrying, and it's bouncing. It, it, it's the worst I've ever, I've been in a lot of flights and a lot of turbulence. This was the worst I've been in. And he's just getting to his seat, and right about then the plane drops. He literally goes up and sticks to the top of the aisle with his back on the roof, hands on the seat. He's in the air. We, come, we stop. He comes back down to one knee, slams to the ground. And, this, and, and all this happens, and he's waiting for his seat. And I remember the, the, the flight attendant looks over and sees him flying up and down, and she's trying to decide... Do I give him his seat or not? I, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm trying to film the whole thing and get it all. And she's trying to make this decision based on, um, you know, her life. What's more important at this point? Because if I get out of my seat, but I got to go all the way to the front. He's doing fine right now, hanging up and holding on to stuff. 
And then uh, I love flying, but I, this, these are some of the things that we just kind of laugh about. My business partner was in a situation once, got on a flight, very tired, long trip, sat down, fell asleep before they even finished loading, right? You've ever had those days? You're out sitting there. He's in the middle. So I don't know if you can picture this, if there's three seats, right? He's in the middle seat, falling asleep, and the tongue goes boom, real loud, wakes him up. But when he wakes up, there's a guy here by the window and a lady in the aisle, about a 70-year-old lady, older lady. He wakes up, and the, it startles him, and he goes, boom, and hits her <laughs> right in the throat. And she couldn't breathe. She's all, ah, 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 and Cole thinks he's hurt her. She's like, man, I'm so sorry. And she's giving him this look, and the, stu- the flight attendant comes over, ma'am, do you need some help? And he's, she's pointing at him, and he's like, I didn't mean to. And what happened? Well, I hit her, but I didn't mean to. I was sleeping. <laughs> and he's trying to explain all, what happened. And, um, and I remember thinking, man, and, and normally when you're done and it's over and she realizes it was a mistake, she would say, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, it's okay, don't worry about it. Never did. Never even <laughs> budged. I'm so sorry she's just sitting there. And Cole said, I am, there's no way I'm falling asleep again, <laughs> knowing that she's just mad at me sitting right here next to me. And, uh, and when he told me that story, I realized, I started making a list of all the mistakes that we've made along the way. Not purposely, but just mistakes and, and trials and things we've been through. Um, I was in a similar situation. Just I got on the story of flights this morning, and I it just came to mind. And, and I don't know who it's for. Someone in here might need it. But I was sitting in the middle aisle again, the middle row, and had to go to the bathroom. I was flying to Australia. Was it 12 hours? And I uh, had to go to the bathroom. And I didn't. This was early on. I didn't know what airplane etiquette was. But when when both people are sleeping next to you and you have to go to the bathroom, what do you do? I. I don't know. I still, I, I know now I can teach. I'll tell you. I'll mentor you what to do from here. <laughs> but I didn't know what to do. So I just thought if I could just step over her carefully and go to the bathroom, no, no harm done. She's sleeping. It won't even matter. Well, right about the time I get up and I, I step over her, she wakes up while I'm straddling, looking at her. <laughs> Very uncomfortable situation for everyone around. And I remember thinking, ma'am, I am so sorry. I just need to go to the bathroom. And she's like, well, next time you can wake me up. So I learned very quickly when you're in a long flight, it's okay to tap the person next to you and, and get out. They probably prefer that than climbing over them. And um, you guys, I hadn't, I hadn't even been in a plane but a couple of times before being in this industry. Only left the country a few times to go down to Mexico with my family. And, and, uh, and we've been able to see the world. We've been able to go places and see things that, that are amazing. And we've had a lot of fun along the way. And I hope this leads to a, a quick thought. Um, and I, I, I share this because I think after talking to people here, it's something that was needed. Listen to how this, uh, listen how this sounds to see if it relates to where you are in your business right now. For a long time, it seemed to me that life was about to begin. Real life, but there was always some obstacle in the way something to be gotten through first, some unfinished business, um, time to be served, a debt to be paid. At last, it dawned on me that these obstacles were my life. This perception has helped me um, to see that there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. So treasure every moment you've had and remember that time waits for no one. Happiness is a journey, not a destination. I've shared that a few times, and the reason I do is because a lot of times I hear, and I've talked to probably 15 people here, and, and this has kind of been my answer, right? I think there's this miscommunication that when I get to seven, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be out of debt. Then I'll be able to spend more time. Then I'll be able to, to have everything I want, have all the time I need. Or when I get to pro 10, then and, and only then will I smile, <laughs> and have fun, and be happy, right? And I hear that, or see that, in a, in a lot of individuals along the, the way. And one of my biggest goals in, in hoping to, to speak publicly and, and help people is just to realize that, you know, when I look back now, the moments that we laugh at and have the most fun were the, some of the most stressful moments I've ever been in. And, and I have hundreds, right, with tons of, of examples of times where we were put in positions that were uncomfortable at the time, but after growing through them and becoming a better person because of them, we end up in a place that 
isn't from sadness to happiness, right? It's, it's realizing what happiness really is, what a perspective of what's going on really means, and how we react to something that's been acted upon us. Our reactions are, are key. And, and I bring that up just as a, as a mindset before we do anything, because I really think we have a lot to be happy about with Life Vantage. Um, and I'm not talking about settling. I love the information we have so far about what can be accomplished and the freedoms that can be there. We know those things. We felt those things. And I can tell you they're real. And money can't buy happiness, but it sure makes things easier when you're not stressed and worried about bills and worried about some of the things that are, are constantly on your mind now. You can have a little different focus. And I do agree that things change along the way. But don't wait for your friends to see you happy, for your friends to want to have what you have, even at a Pro 3 or a Pro 5 or a Pro 7 or whatever that rank is. I, I sometimes think that people say, well, I have a hard time, and I heard this today, I have a hard time you know, in telling my friends all about this because I'm only a Pro 1 or only a Pro 3 or only a Pro 5 and, and don't make the kind of money you make, so I have to have one of you in the room with me so that they will understand. And there are some individuals that, that might be true. There might be some individuals that, that need to see that, but most people just need to see that the community, the, the feelings we have here, the things that are going here on, on here are unique. And, and when people come, they feel that. They can, they can feel there's something special. And they can find what they're looking for sometimes without just, just the paycheck, right? They can find things in health and happiness and, and a culture along the way to financial success. And so just a quick point I wanted to point out. One thing I wanted to discuss just a little bit is, is that behavior or the, the ability to adapt and become a seven, eight, nine, and 10, and, and what that looks like along the way. Because I think there's a set of skills that comes with that. I used to describe it as these phases, right? I mean, you might have heard that on some of the pro audios. And the downfall with the phase is we think it's a checkbox, right? Oh, I finished phase one, now I'm in phase two. So that might not have been the right word, but it's definitely a, a, pro a progress to be learned. For example, if you want to be a surgeon, when you go to school your freshman year, there's certain things that you will not be learning <laughs> your freshman year that you will be learning you know, maybe eight years down the road. There's things you have to have, skills you have to have, abilities you have to have before they can teach you the next step. Fighting fires is the same way. When, when we got to our you know, 4,000 people tested for 50 positions on the job, I think there was 3,200 people tested that year. We got on the job, the first day on the job we ran Six flights of stairs, ran down, came back, got chewed out because we didn't wait for everybody. <laughs> I was first back, I said, oh, I did good. Got yelled at because we didn't wait. Ran back, waited for everyone, came back, got yelled at because we were too slow waiting for everybody. Right, it's that mentality game, here we go. Um, after two of those towers, I had one guy walk out and left. He quit. And I'm like, you just quit? I said, we had friends and family lined up to take that spot and you just walked away? Two thoughts crossed my mind. One is that should have been for someone else, right? If you didn't know, I didn't know it was going to be this hard. Six stories twice? I mean, <laughs> we got to where we were doing 50 of those a day. Okay? He walks away. Second thought, well, I'm glad he walked away now, right? As a firefighter, a little bit from mentality, I don't want to be in a fire and find this out. He's running, you see this, the back of his hat going out the door and you're, you need him. <laughs> Bad time to find out that, that someone's a little worried about that stuff. Before the time, before the energy, before the training... Um, but I saw in that process the, uh, the ability for, for those that did stick it out, who barely got up the tower twice and came back and said, I'm going to stick this out. The next day doing eight, the next day doing 10, the next day working our way up. There was skills and things and, and the abilities had to come slowly. And it's no different here. Some of the frustrations I'm hearing are the, the worries come from us wanting to, we want to run fast. We want to, to, to be that person tomorrow. Okay. We want to. Do that, but there is a little bit of a process, and it's okay. Let a mentor help you walk through it. And um, what I noticed is that first phase of the first skill set that we have to learn to do is we need to, to invite and enroll. Okay, if you're, if you're looking at step one, phase one, I know it, it goes in lines with what Trish just shared as well, so you might be able to write it next to her notes. It's pretty much the same. Learn to invite and enroll. Here's what we were teaching long before the income statement form came out. What Rank can you become by inviting and enrolling? If you are good at inviting and enrolling people every day, what rank do you think you could get to in the company by just owning up and, and, perf and perfecting that, that behavior or that skill? Pro three? 
That's what I have down too. And I, I've actually asked this to a lot of people. We went around to our group. We have over 100,000 people. And we've just, as we move meetings, I pull this information to try to get an average. And it's been pretty neat and pretty accurate. Is that behavior will, will be a, about a pro three in the company. These aren't income claims, by the way. I'm just giving examples of behaviors and, and what, they, what they can relate to. And when the income statement form came out, we were teaching before this that, that a pro three um, or that behavior or that rank will make hundreds of dollars a month. And the average is 570 on the income statement form for a pro three. So attaching, looking at what pro threes do and finding the behaviors they do, pro three, hundreds of dollars, and I started to attach a little bit of a, a goal sheet versus what you're willing to do. And here's why. People all the time come to me and say, I need 20 grand a month. I want 20 grand a month. This is my why and my dream. And then I start looking at what's required on the skill set or the abilities for them to learn and accomplish and become. And they're not willing to do some of those things, right? So I just have this conversation about what we need to do and what, what will come with that. I've learned in network marketing, the only time I've seen this be negative is when somebody's, per, there's perception of what they're going to get doesn't match what they're willing to do. Does that make sense? It's the only time I've seen it negative. I, I was expecting 20 grand and sitting at home on the couch, I didn't get it and, and it must not work. <laughs> okay? I, I love that concept because I just want to make sure that people understand how to get there. I don't want them to lower that goal, but if they're not willing to get off the couch, I need them to or else they're going to have a bad experience. But if their willingness matches what their, their goals are, then they're going to have a great experience. So think about that for a second. Second phase or skill set is to teach and present. You need to be able to stand in front of a group and, and, and somewhat intelligently in your own way, in your own form, do a 20, 30-minute presentation on the company timing trends, product compensation, and system. Be able to explain those things so you're no longer waiting for someone to come, waiting for the next person to come to town, waiting two weeks for your sponsor to get there. And what rank in the company or income do you see by those that are standing up in front of groups with a marker and doing presentations, 15 a month, more than that a month, what rank do you think is associated with that behavior? Pro five, huh? I, I kind of hear that chant out there. And maybe more or less, right? But I understand it. What are pro fives? And again, we have an income statement form, so these numbers are averages, 2250. We used to teach thousands. That behavior will bring you thousands of dollars a month. The third behavior or, or mindset or thought is a mentoring and training skill set. Do you see now why I, I change it from phases? Because I think some people think, oh man, I'm done enrolling, now I'm, a, now I'm a presenter. And they would check the box. <laughs> and they were misunderstanding that that's not so. It just means that you've perfected this skill and any time you need to do that, or any time you find someone on your list or you think of someone, you can go back and, and you're, you've, you've owned that skill. It's part of you now. You've become that, you can do that. But people that get stuck that, too many people say, I, I, I want thousands of dollars a month, but I'll never do a presentation. <laughs> I'm scared to death to present. What's my response? We need to reduce what you're willing to have or increase what you're willing to do so that they match. I hope mentors are doing that so that we have positive experiences and we're managing those expectations. That's my definition of managing those expectations. Mentoring and training. What rank do you think you could hit by doing a good job at mentoring and training others? And what I mean by this is you, you take people who are inviting and you teach them how to present. You train them to be presenters. What rank do you think comes with that? Seven? What do sevens make on an average? 10,000 10, a month, over 100 grand a year. Okay, and I, just think about this for a minute because I think this is the best way. I think you got a lot of how to's today. I'm just gonna kind of give you a concept and maybe summarize everything today and put it in perspective so that we know what we need to go out and do next. Okay, what phase we're trying to get to, what skill set we're trying to adapt so that we can increase our rank, our income, whatever is associated with that, our abilities, you know, the person we are, and, and the, th the people, the number of people we can help. I think those things are attached. But I, I really think that there's a lot of people that want that 10 grand a month, but in reality, they're going to say, or, or you know, I'll present or I'll do this, but, you know, they, they're just not sure if they can do the skill set that's attached. And once they see it, 
then I hope they own up to some of those skill sets or, or make their goals fit. Here's some questions that you can ask yourself alongside of those. Phase one, here's a question you can ask. How many people have you enrolled? This question might be for you personally so that you can uh, evaluate yourself to see if, you've, if, if you're good at that phase, if you're in that phase, if you've you know, accomplished some of that. If you have 10 brand new platinum packs, I would say that you could, you, you're going to move over to that next phase and start running because those 10 platinum packs are going to need your help while you're presenting. Right? They're going to be inviting, you're going to be presenting, there's going to be some, some connections. It doesn't mean you can't enroll 10 more, it just means that your time will shift a little bit into a, a different skill set. Okay? How many people have I enrolled? Second one, um, how many presentations did I do last month? Ask yourself that. How many presentations did I do last month? Open your calendar and there's a number. Okay, and how many am I gonna do this month? Whether they're booked or they're going to be booked, how many presentations am I doing a month? And the last one, how would you know if you're mentoring people? What would be a good question attached to are you mentoring those in your group to present? How many people in my group are doing presentations? How many people besides me are doing presentations? While you write that down, think of this. I'll give you a, a, a live example. I had somebody come up to me after an Elite Academy, came up front, waited in line. It was kind of fun. Two or three people waited. He came up. He said, I just have a question. I have a little bit of an issue. I'm just getting everyone's advice. I want to know your advice. The problem is we only get a two-minute conversation when we have that situation, right? Two minutes, and we want to talk to as many people as we can. Very simple. I hit Pro 3. Excuse me, I hit Pro 5, this is what he told me, in less than three months, and was Pro 5 for, at that point, it was almost a year, okay? Um, here I am trying to evaluate this as quick as I can and give some kind of thoughtful advice that might help, and first question I said, well, how many have you enrolled? There was a number, it was a great number, how many leaders have you enrolled? If you want to add that word leaders, it, it might change a little bit on how we think of just the numbers of people we enrolled, going back to... Trish's example, it's not just 10, but it's those two to three or four out of the 10 that are actually what we're looking for. But how many of you enrolled? There is a, a process we have to go through to do that. And told me the number, it was, it was high, they're all doing great, there's a lot of leaders, it was great. Second question, how many presentations are you doing in a month? Okay. Hitting Pro 5 in less than three months, what do you think his answer was? 30. <laughs> 25 to 30, he showed me his calendar, it was full, it was, he, was, he was doing those behaviors, he hit Pro 5, that matched that behavior. Okay, third question, I wanna see why not six and seven in a year, how many people on your team are doing presentations? What do you think that answer was? Got offended a little bit. He's like, what do you mean? He said, like, I do a great presentation. All right, do you hear this in yourself sometimes? <laughs> What do you mean? I do a great presentation. I, I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm, I'm at this city. I'm this city. I'm doing 30 meetings. No one in my group's suffering. I'm in all their cities and all their areas. And, and I've been doing that for, for, for a long time. And I'm getting, I mean, it's, it's tiring. It's 30 a month for that long. And it was that simple conversation. I said, well, in my experience, the Pro 7 behavior is a mentoring behavior. And they teach people to teach. Teach people to be in those ranks. And, and to, I mean, to uh, be able to, to communicate and do a, a presentation. My simple advice to that person was do not do a presentation the rest of this month <laughs> or next month without having somebody do half of it with you. Keep your schedule, bring them up, edify them, let them do what they feel comfortable with, sit down, and, and it's going to be hard. He said, and later on we talked, it was the hardest thing he said he's ever done, to let these, these new distributors start to duplicate and start to become a leader. And he sat there and said, it was so hard because they're messing up. And I know I can do better than them. And I'm sitting in the audience and there's a guest right here who's not getting it. And I knew I could have helped that guest. Right? Sometimes we tailor it to the one guest, not realizing that if we train one distributor to be a, a, a presenter, that's going to happen 15 to 20 more times every single month. Right? It's going to duplicate and happen over and over again. What if you teach 15 people to go do 15 to 20 a month? What happens to your business? It becomes the type of business that looks like a Pro 7. It's the only way to get to Pro 7. It's the only way to get to that rank. And these meetings are unique, you guys, because we have distributors that have just signed up. We have Pro 7s and Pro 10s in the room. And so we're, we're talking to everybody. And so I hope somewhere along these, these examples, you can pull out the example that, that hits you, right? What, where am I right now in my business? And 
What do I need to do to get to the next phase? What am I willing to do, become, study? You guys, I had a guy literally wanted the world in the company, stood up to do his first introduction in his home to introduce me to do the presentation. He stood up, said, this is blue, and he looks over and everyone looks at him. And he goes, oh man, and he starts getting nervous and I can see it, and I can see the blood leaving his face. <laughs> and in white, I just go over and stand by him. I grab a hold of his belt loop. He literally passed out cold, standing up. And I remember holding on to him, and I took two steps. I laid him on the ottoman, put his feet up, and I started the meeting. I decided to be fine. And his buddies, when he woke up, his buddies, I hear him, man, you were out. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't out. He was a tough guy. He actually worked for the Border Patrol. He was a tough guy. He was like, no, I didn't pass out. like, dude, we were slapping your face. You were out, cold. They're kind of getting a kick out. I'm trying to not draw attention and just start the meeting, and he's fine, and... He came to a little bit, and he got his color back, and I'm, the meeting's already, you know, 10 minutes into it, and he's still over there kind of figuring it out. Um, a very literal fear, right? We're not talking about a fear that said, yeah, I'm a little bit scared of talking in front of people. We're talking about a fear that puts you on the ground, right? That's, that's a fear. Um, he got over that fear. It took him over a year. It took him classes at a, at a, at a, at a college, at a junior college, to, to learn how to speak. I mean, he had to... to, to to fight that one head on. I don't know how to help him with some of those besides giving him littler pieces. Right before he passes out, lay him down before it happens, and next time we hope it gets a little bit longer, right? These are his friends in his home. Around a kitchen table, he was awesome. Stands up, people look at him, he goes down, right? So my point is, it's not that, I understand that some of those fears are real. I guess that's my point. I understand, I try to understand that they're real. I also understand that we had some of the same fears and we just looked at them head on and, and overcame them to get over those. Um, a leader, one of my favorite quotes, this might summarize some of this as well. A leader is, is close enough to their team to relate, but just far enough ahead to inspire. I read that one day and it hit me so perfect because a leader is close enough to their team to relate, but just far enough ahead to inspire. What I take that as is that we need to always remember where we came from, right? So that we can relate. And I'm okay sharing stories and mistakes we made and goofy things we did. And, you know, I, I, don't, I love that. Actually, it helps me because we just had a conversation with a gentleman in the back of the room about, you know, when we hit those little ruts, what gets us out. And for me, I had mentors that were on stage that I could relate with. I had a few key mentors. Eric Albertson was one of those that I, I understood his background, where he came from, what he did, hobbies he did, struggles he had, and I related. And it helped me to realize that it's not us and them. I hope you don't see a line up here and we're us and them. We, we try to eliminate that. We want to be close enough to you that you can relate to what we had, what we have, the trials we've had, the amount of kids we have, the amount of you know, meetings we had to mess up on before we could kind of figure it out, the amount of times we made mistakes. We want to relate. We want you to know that that is you, and it's okay. You're, you're nowhere different than we were. We just maybe a little bit ahead of that time frame of doing it longer, right? or, or, or correcting little things quicker, or whatever that might be. The second thing is we want to be just far enough ahead of our teams, or you want to be just far, in your head, far you know, ahead of your team so that you can inspire them right? with your attitudes, the optimism, the excitement, the, the rank even, the income, all those things might, might be being a little farther ahead. But it's a way to relate to your team and to be able to have and hold on to, uh, to some of the, the key points that allow your team to be inspired and to look to you for, for support and guidance. One other thing, we get asked a lot, you know, what did you do different? Here's what I've been doing, but what did you do different? How did you hit this rank so fast? Or what did you do? And, I'm, and I thought about this a lot because I had some long answer and it was different every time. And I'm you know, trying to think in the lines of database and inviting and presenting, and, and we stepped up into some of those roles quick, right? My first meeting was 12 minutes. That's all I knew. <laughs> 12 minutes, six people there, four people signed up, right? I really think that if I would have left it at 12 minutes, it, it probably would have helped. <laughs> but we learn more, we explain more, and, we, and pretty soon the friends in the room are thinking, oh, I got to know all that? Nah. First meeting, 12 minutes? I'm in. I can, I can say what you just said, <laughs> right? Something to think about a little bit. But here's the, what I contribute, the number one thing to, to the to rate of, of your growth. 
It's going to matter right now with, with what's going on in the company. It's going to matter heading to convention. It's going to matter in your own homes and own uh, personal towns here. It's the, I call it the, the three attitudes, right? <laughs> the first attitude, for example, you know, there is a master class on Saturday. Okay? Bring your friends. It's going to be awesome. Right? That, that happened to you sometime this last week or months ago or somewhere that happened, right? Here's no, attitude number one. You can write these down. I think they might help. And attitude number one, I will be there. Is that a good attitude? Great attitude, right? Because there's a bunch that don't even get that far. I will be boating. <laughs> I will be gone. I don't quite, you know, I'm busy or whatever. I will be there is a great number one attitude. Number two, I will be there and I will have guests with me. I will bring five people with me. I will have a car full of people with me. As mentors, that's usually where we stop mentally. That's perfect. That's what we want, right? But there was a third attitude that I want to present to you and, and, and hope that you can grab a hold of and take ownership of. And it's a mentality of, hey, that's Saturday. It's only Monday. Okay? What do you do between Monday and Saturday? Just invite people? What's that third attitude do? My house t tonight or tomorrow night. Okay? This is what we did. We actually had some of our mentors come into Tucson to do a presentation when we first heard about Life Vantage. It was about a week away, and we started doing this attitude. Tuesday night, my house, bring people over. Don't know what we're saying yet. That was the 12-minute 12, 12 meeting, because right? I didn't know. They weren't even here yet to, to, to explain everything to us. Um, Monday night, had four people say yes. Where do you think we were the next night? In one of their homes with a few of their friends. It's last minute notice, it's great, right? Sometimes all the preparation and all that usually is, in my opinion, sometimes why we have 12 commitments and it gives them two days to figure out why they want to tell you they, didn't, they couldn't come. <laughs> if it's tomorrow night or tonight, it's a little different. You, you off tonight? Yep, great, I'll come pick you up, okay? Different mentality, it's, it's, it was quick. Tuesday, Wednesday, we're in the next home. Thursday, the next home. Friday, one more presentation at lunch in another home, we had 80, Two eighty-seven. I can't remember exactly people at that even, at that very first meeting that we had. Okay, what could we have said? I'll see you there. We'll have lunch. Okay, would we have would we have gotten the momentum and the pace we would have if that was our mentality? Second thing we could have said, hey, I'll bring five people. I'll bring those six people that came to that first meeting. I'll bring those with me. And that's what most people do, and that's great. It does grow. I call that the five to ten year plan. Okay. If you want it to happen in months, it's a, it's a different message. It's taking ownership and doing things today that are going to affect tomorrow. Those 80 people got to hear that from a mentor of ours. Groups of people enrolled. We were busy for months. And when we launched, what, 60 days later, there was over 500 people in an organization that were already ready to, to go. That happens from a different mentality. My, my whole point of sharing that is so I hope you can steer yourselves away from some of those good attitudes to something better, right? I think there's good, there's better, and there's things that are best, and I think you need to evaluate where they are because I don't think anything's bad. We're just steering ourselves to those things that are, that are even better. I have one last thought to leave with you guys. I've shared this again a couple times. Right now, it means more than ever to me with the excitement that's going on, the energy, the feeling that's at corporate, the, the understanding that, that, that corporate and the distributors have, the simplicity of, of the packages and, and how they work. And the, I really believe that the momentum that we rode to Pro 10, the feelings we had, the energy that was there is here again. And the next group of people will ride that to Pro 10. The next group is going to jump on and, and ride that. But it is not going to be a I'll see you in a week mentality. It will not be. There will be people that will miss the, the energy and the, the wave that's coming right now. Think about this for one second. Imagine there is a bank account that credits your account each morning with $86,400. I think that was... It carries over no balance from day to day, and, and, and every evening the bank deletes whatever part of the balance you failed to use during the day. Okay, So just think about that for a minute. Every day in the morning, $86,400. You have one day to spend it. At the end of the day, it deletes what's not there, whatever you didn't spend. What would you do with that? What would you do every day? There wouldn't be a penny left in there, right? 
you'd use what you could and give the rest away or do something. You would be using every bit of that. You would draw out every cent. Every cent. Each of us have such a bank. Its name is time. Each morning it credits you with 86,400 seconds. Every night it writes off as a loss. Whatever of this you have failed to invest to a good purpose. It carries over no balance. It allows no overdraft. Each day it opens a new account for you. Each night burns the remains of the day. If you fail to use the day's deposits, the loss is yours. There is no drawing against tomorrow. You must live in the present on today's deposits. Invest it so as to get from it the utmost in health, happiness, and success. The clock is running. Make the most of your day. To realize the value of a year, ask a student who just failed a grade. Talk about time for a minute, right? To realize the value of a, of a week, ask the editor of a, a weekly newspaper. To realize the value of an hour, ask two lovers that have been waiting to meet. To realize the value of a minute, ask a person who just missed a train or a flight, right? It happens. To realize the value of one second, ask someone who just avoided an accident. And as a firefighter side of me, I've seen the other side where that second can go the other way. It's a split second. To realize the value of a millisecond, ask the person who just won the silver medal at the, at the Olympics. Milliseconds, right? Heartbreaking milliseconds. After so much training and heartache and, and push and, and energy, they missed it by a millisecond, right? Treasure every moment you have and treasure it more because you've shared it with someone special, special enough to spend your time. And remember, time waits for no one. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. I, wanted, I want to close with that. I hope that you guys, and I say you guys and us, I mean, we are in a position right now that we all have an ability to capture something special. But it's only going to be from an attitude of, what am I doing today with that millisecond, <laughs> with those hours and minutes, and what are we doing with those? Because I really, and Seth told me this, I don't know if he remembers exactly, I, I wrote it down. He said, every hour we spend this year will probably take about, I think he said 25 or 26 hours. I remember we were kind of calculating it out. It's kind of fun to think about. It's just an example and a concept, but it's going to take almost 20 hours to replace that hour next year, especially in this business, right? If you work hard this year and, de and develop a team and take that team to convention and set it in the room at convention, let your team take ownership and let your team feel what we're feeling and let them come home. And without you trying to explain the excitement that was there, they get to You have 20 people now explaining what's going on instead of you doing that by yourself. I will go. I will bring a few with me. Or let's work today, do a meeting tomorrow, do a meeting the next day, so that the entire, our entire street and city and, and friends and all the people who live can go to that event. Because those hours we spend now, the 20 people we spend get to get there, what if we get those 20 to the next one and lose that time? Or what if we bring those 20 next year when we finally realize how, how great this is and we wait until then to start? It's going to take 20 times the, the time to try to catch up to what we could have done if we started today. So I leave you with that thought, you guys. I, I will tell you this has been amazing. I, I, it, I, I try not to echo everything that was already said. There is one thing I will say, though. There's been times in my life when I, I knew I was doing the right thing, but it felt very, very weird, very hard. It was hard for me to do, to leave my family to go to work to support them. I knew supporting them was the right thing, but going to work at the firehouse for a 24-hour shift and leaving my wife and kids at home was hard. But I was doing it. If you said, what's more important, my wife... My family, I mean, my family or, or work, what would your answer be? Every time, family, right? What's the first thing that goes on your calendar if you're working a job? Work, right? It is more important, but in the reality, priority-wise, it's not. It, it, our work is a priority to support them. I get the connection and all of that, but here's, here's why I bring this up, because after putting our head down, it was almost a year into this this company specifically, I went back to my family after telling them what time we're taking away and doing that. I went back to them and I said, guys, we did it. We've accomplished what we, we started to accomplish. The why we wanted has been accomplished. I said, I've committed a bunch of things to a lot of people. I'm not done. But how much time do you guys want back? 
as a family, what do you want back? And it was great to see them take time on my calendar. It was the first time in my life, right? No job, no commitments, sitting down with my family before everything and asking them what they wanted. And them checking off days, I need you here, Dad. I got a, a recital for this. I got this. It was the first time that I put everything that they needed first. And work got to be second for the first time. My goal is to help all of us feel what that's like. Trish said it's the first time in her life that she feels that things are in the proper order, in the proper priority. And it's the first, that's the way I try to explain it. It's the first time I can put everything I think is most important in my calendar first and do what I think is still good in mentoring and supporting and, and following those other commitments second without suffering on the income side. That is my, my goal. I appreciate you guys taking your, Saturday, your, your time today. Um, thanks for inviting us, and we'll, we'll be back next time. Thank you.